Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Ox Talks. Appreciate you being here. It is Tuesday, June 25th, 2024. Um, I wanted to get a video up yesterday, just didn't have enough time in the day. Still on the trial preparation for a trial starting this Friday. Uh, we're going to be calling into the court Friday in the morning, having some motions heard, some pretrial motions ad addressed. And then assuming there's a courtroom available, uh, we will start to pick a jury on Monday morning, a week from yesterday. So a lot goes into that, a lot of hours, uh, a lot of preparedness, uh, usually preparing the right way, usually not always ensures uh, success. So I think that goes for anything, not just in my my chosen profession, but being prepared, uh, you know, being on time, having uh, your you know what together uh, shows. Uh, it will it shows in anything you do, especially you younger uh, people. I hope that uh, you take that to heart because you see a lot of that not happening these days, right? There's there's no shortcuts. You have to put the time in. Uh, and, uh, and usually the results will pay off. Let me start today by once again thanking you for being here. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. We are growing. Appreciate all your input, all your comments. They mean a lot to me. They're very intelligent. I've been struggling lately trying to find time to respond to them, uh, but keep them coming. Again, subscribe to the channel, please, for me. Uh, hit that uh, thumbs up uh, button and the bell notification as well. I have some stories to share today. I'm going to keep it relatively short, but talks about the tie-in between the public debt, the national debt, and the housing market and interest rates, which obviously affect mortgage rates. We know now that mortgage rates remain elevated over 7%, and that is, is, is choking off buyers' ability to get into the housing market, all right? We also know uh, that there's been a softening in prices a little bit, uh, but we're gonna start seeing uh, inventory, I believe, picking up. So let me share the stories with you. Hopefully you'll see the tie-in and it, it makes sense uh, to you. And uh, let's just jump right in, Zero Hedge. This is an article from yesterday I wanted to share, didn't have time to do so. It's entitled, U.S. Budget Disaster Will Impoverish Americans. And it says, the CBO, and that's the Congressional Budget Office, expects a budget deficit of $1.9 trillion in 2024, a year that allegedly uh, we had economic growth, and in a year that allegedly the uh, had record tax receipts, okay, uh, they expect revenues to reach 4.9 trillion or 17 percent of GDP in 2024, which will rise to 18 percent by 2027 and remain at that level until 2034. So, if we are to believe that we have uh, record tax revenues, right? That means they're collecting record amount, amounts of taxes from American tax-paying citizens, uh, and that uh, there is record growth, which you hear every day that everything is going great. Then why are they running $1.9 trillion uh, in the negative? It says, by 2034, the CBO expects outlays to soar from 6.8 trillion to 10.3 trillion or 25% of GDP. Public debt rises from 99% of GDP this year in 2024 to 122% in 2034 or $50.6 trillion to which we must also add public debt held by other entities including the Fed. The CBO projections prove Without a doubt, it says that there is no way in which the United States could, could balance the budget through revenue measures alone. There's no set of revenue measures that can collect $2 trillion per year in additional uh, annual receipts. An economy that generates an annual deficit of 6% of GDP to achieve a mere 2% annual growth, it says, is on a very dangerous path. Why should Americans be worried about this reckless pace of borrowing, question mark? Because it will mean three things to them or for them. Number one, higher taxes. Number two, weaker growth. And number three, declining purchasing power of their salary and their savings. So 
We know the private debt in this country uh, is, is, has exploded. People are taking on much more debt than they should be. Uh, they're struggling to make even the bare minimum payments on their credit cards. They're engaging in all this reckless spending and buy now, pay later, later plans because they're buying stuff they shouldn't be buying. They can't afford uh, to impress people that don't care. We know that. So now this is the public sector. But a tie-in here is how the public sector debt spiraling out of control uh, is going to, is keeping, is going to keep mortgage rates elevated. And uh, I thought this story was very interesting. It's out of Fox Business, again, from yesterday. I wanted to share it with you, just didn't have time to do so. So here's what it says. Prospective home buyers in the United States are keeping a close eye on the Federal Reserve as they eagerly await interest rate cuts that could offer relief from painfully high borrowing costs. Side note, I uh, saw earlier today one of the Fed uh, speakers or uh, Fed chairs came out and it was a, one, of the, one of the females said that she uh, is not a, opposed to further interest rate hikes, not cuts, all right? But there is another factor that says it could keep mortgage rates elevated in the coming months and years, and that is the U.S. national debt. But a delay in Fed, so the delay in Fed rate cuts is not the only reason mortgage rates will remain higher for longer. A record high federal debt is also contributing to persistently high mortgage rates. That's because the federal government has to pay a massive amount of interest on the debt that it owes. To do so, the government will issue more treasury bonds which it needs, in which it needs to pay out a good rate of return in order to attract investors. The mortgage-backed securities, right, uh, are competing for the same investors and also need to offer a high rate of return. The risk is that the U.S. continues to grow, the article says, its debt at such an unsustainable rate that foreigners, okay, foreigners, including private investors and central banks holding treasury bonds, will start to sell those bonds, okay? And the foreigners, if the foreigners, it's if, were to start selling those bonds in mass, the U.S. government would, would struggle to finance itself and pay down the mounting interest costs on its own debt. Should that happen, the Federal Reserve would most likely step in and print the money, driving inflation and long-term interest rates even higher. Okay, so there's a tie-in to the public debt. I don't know, we're seeing a little softening in the 30-year mortgage rates, but the, uh, the hopium that they're going to have a massive decline, I think, is nothing but hopium, pie in the sky. I hope you found that tie-in interesting because you don't see that, uh, that, let's say, analysis done. Not that I did, but looking at the two articles and overlaying them. Uh, last article I'll share with you, talks, it was from today. This is Business Insider, and it sums it up real well. Uh, the U.S. real estate market is headed for a correction, according to strategists. All right, and I think that we share that on this channel a lot. We all know uh, a lot of things are heading for the cliff at a very, very rapid pace. But real estate, uh, uh, from my perspective, what this article says is obviously a, one of the asset classes that will be leading the charge. America's real estate market could be in for a big correction, according to veteran strategist Chris. Uh, Vermilion, and he says uh, the chief market strategist of the technical traders pointed to worrying signals flashing in the real estate sector as borrowing costs look poised to stay higher for longer. Borrow borrowing costs, mortgage rates, construction starts, he says, for single family and multifamily homes have plateaued after a steep drop last year. A similar pattern that flashed part of the 2008 housing correction, he noted. The stabilization of construction activity is likely due to a burst of investment that's hit the sector, but real estate is still in trouble, especially, he says, if mortgage rates remain elevated, according to this guy. And the article I just shared with you gave us one explanation why mortgage rates will absolutely stay elevated. And that's because they have to in order for our government to basically service the debt that it has. Says to me, this guy says to me, this is a sign that things are really breaking down and this is just a bounce. 
he said of the, of the recent stabilization and construction activity. It's the last bright spot for now where you can squeeze a little bit of profits out of these buildings. Materials are up, labor costs are up, he says, and then we see the financial sector and real estate pricing really fall apart. While most single family homes in the U.S. are financed with 30 year mortgage, higher rates could pose a problem for property owners who need to refinance sooner. Uh, that's the case for many commercial property owners. And we've talked about that on the, uh, in the past on this channel. Uh, and that sector, commercial property sector, has $900 billion of debt maturing this year alone. So he concludes by saying people don't realize that real estate is primed and ready for another major leg down. They're buying right now because there's been a pullback, but the reality is I think we're going to see this collapse, he says. So I won't ramble on too much longer today. We're at 11 minutes. I will tell you this, um, my family and I are going to be starting a new family company. I'll keep you in the loop as we do this, but we are going to be, I have banking relationships, we have high credit scores, we have dry powder, we have uh, done all the things in the last, let's say 10 years uh, that we didn't do uh, in the, the prior 10 years the right way. Go back and watch my video from last weekend or weekend before on our foreclosure in 2010 and you'll see why I learned. I learned the hard way, I got my ass kicked and I've spent all those years making the exact opposite decision. So we are ready to pounce on this thing and uh, we are gonna start accumulating a real estate, uh, distressed real estate, uh, and it does, you know, there's lots of ways to do it, right? You can take on non-performing loans. Uh, you can get involved in pre-foreclosures. Pre you can get involved in bank-owned properties, a post-foreclosure. Uh, you can obviously go just out uh, and, and, and make offers on, on good real estate properties, deals that you see uh, out there in the marketplace. I don't think now's the right time. We're not there yet. Not legal advice, not financial advice, but it is coming and it's coming, I believe, in mass. And so if you're one of those that's, that's made the correct choices, you, you've worked on your credit score, you've kept some resources and some powder dry, so to speak, uh, there are going to be, from my perspective, tremendous opportunities. And look, at you don't, can't believe over the years how many clients have come uh, before me in this office and sat across this desk, uh, clients, uh, ch children of clients that deceased, uh, and, and I hear about massive real estate portfolios uh, that they have accumulated. The parents did, and then the kids took over years later. And look, they had the rental income paying the mortgage down, right? The rental income was doing the heavy lifting for them. Meanwhile, you're getting tremendous uh, tax benefits. Uh, you are building uh, equity. You are paying down debt. Uh, you are obviously, hopefully, if you've done it the right way, you're also providing, excuse me, a potential uh, substantial uh, net income stream for you and your family as well. So uh, I've been waiting a long time for this, and uh, obviously, we do not ignore our preps. We do not ignore being prepared with food and water and alternative assets and security, please, uh, and keeping yourself physically fit. All these things, you don't, you don't stop doing that. But if you're able to also take advantage of opportunities that are going to present themselves, and maybe guess what? Maybe you're able to, and what we want to do is help out families that were in our situation. Because look, after we lost the house in foreclosure in 2010, I remember I had a, a doctor that understood. I laid it out. I showed him my tax returns and look what happened. We got screwed on this deal. We made a bad decision. Uh, and here's where we're at. And here's the people that we are. And, and, and he uh, rented us a house for, for several years, a nice place. And we're able to have a smooth transition. But look, at that's what I want to do. Uh, and, and my family, we're going to put ourselves in that position where we're going to help out families that are going to be in need. And people are going to be in need, uh, you know, when, when, you know, millions of homes uh, in this country and people are foreclosed upon or have to turn back the keys to their house because they're overextended or the equity dropped below the value of their mortgage and they had no alternative or they needed to refinance because they had an emergency and they couldn't refinance because the rates were too high for them to repay the loan. A whole host of things, all of these things are going to be unfolding across this country. And yes, a lot of people are going to suffer, but 
you know, if you think it through the right way and you're positioned to take advantage of the opportunities, you can actually turn a bad situation into a good situation and also uh, do some good for a lot of people. So um, that is that is where where my thinking is going uh, in the next few years. Again, I'll bring you guys along for the journey as we go. Share with you uh, strategies I'm using and, and, and how I'm going to how I'm going to accomplish this. Obviously, we're going to do this the right way. We're going to form LLCs and holding companies and separate personal, uh, you know, finances and personal assets from business obligations and business, um, let's say, transactions and, and holdings. You have to do it the right way. So get the right get the right information, get the right advice, put a team of people around you that know what they're doing. A good CPA, a good lawyer, right? It's like having, you know, a good doctor, a good dentist, all that kind of stuff. You've got to have the stuff in place the right way or it can end really, really badly. So risk is good if you do it, can be good if you do it the right way. I'll leave it there today. I'll be leaving in about an hour to get a workout in. I've been work, trying very hard to keep the workout consistent because it helps me to keep my stress levels down and to just feel good. Hope all of you will please do the same. Get those steps in, do some strength training, watch the calories you're taking in and the type of things and food and things you're putting uh, into your system. Let's stay strong, healthy. Uh, with that being said, I'll do my best to get a couple more videos up this week. Again, appreciate all of you tuning in and being here. Have a great afternoon and evening. Hopefully see you tomorrow. Bye.